What is up YouTube? Welcome back with another video. I know it's been a while. I always say this at the beginning of every video just because I have high hopes that I'm here to stay but I just get sidetracked, get busy but I'm not gonna promise you guys that this time but I do plan to be here more often. I have this face for you guys today I did a poll on Instagram and it was between a full glam look and a full or a quick basic look but I did go in depth throughout this video I explained everything brows liner eyeshadow nose contour lips I told you my secrets my tips and tricks it feels so good to be back on YouTube and I say that now but once I'm editing this video I'm gonna be like I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely give it some thumbs up if this is what you guys want to see more from me. Let me know if you even try this out and if it works for you because I definitely want to help you guys out the best that I can. Without further ado, let's get into this look. Okay, so I know I look half done. Lately, I've been doing very creative looks, um, glam, cut crease, and I really wanted to kind of bring it back tone it down a little bit but still keep it pretty pretty glam for you guys so for the brows I love to use the Anastasia dip brow in ash brown when I fill in my brows I don't do anything fancy like this whole thing um, I don't do that but it could help you if you're not sure what your brow shape is is that the front of your brow you know I have a fat nose so you want to go with the skinnier part of your nose um, you want it to start there. So you see how my natural brow doesn't start where it should, but she growing, so she gonna get there. And it's good to use a brush because it's so straight. So then when I hold it at an angle like this, this is where the arch of your brow should be. You want this to line up with the middle of your eye, and then you want this to line up with the end of your eye, still connected to your nose. And that's where you want your end to be. So my natural brow is naturally there. I kind of have a good brow to work on. It took a while to grow these babies back. So if you think that your brows won't grow back, they will. Because if I could insert a few pictures, just a few, you know. <laughs> my brows were non-existent. Let's start this brow. So whenever I do my brows, I like to work on this section right here. So because it's missing that's what I want to fill in and that's what I do on this brow on this side it's not so much here that I'm worried about but it's here that's pretty sparse to lightly feather the thing about it is I don't make it perfect so I don't really stress out about it because I do go under with concealer to really clean it up then after I kind of get the outline of what I'm going for I start to work on the arch for the arch it's okay if it's dark because you want the front of your brow to be pretty light and then all right here you want that structure so now i'm going to start working product towards the front of my brow and the reason why i work from the the back to the front is because for the front of my brows i want to keep it pretty light and i feel like if i use most of the product towards the back by the time we get to the front there'll not be as much product so she coming she's still coming for me it takes me about 20 25 minutes to do my brows and that's a long time i'm going to use a mirror so i can see more closely so for me i like the bottom of my brow to be very defined so i'll go in pretty heavy handed there and then i'll comb product up into my brow then I'll take some product and I will kind of tap it comb through again. Now I'm going in with Tarte Shade Tape and this is in the shade Light Medium. I'm going to carve is what they call it but basically I'm applying concealer under the brows to clean them up. Like before, I just like to get as much product as I can off of the brush just because if you have too much concealer and get it into the brows it could have you doing your brows over again so then then I drag the product down 
if I have anything on top that is not matching or doesn't vibe, I will go in with concealer on top as well. If you are looking with wanting to experiment with using gel products as brow, NYX has a brow gel that you could practice with. It's not as expensive. You can figure out if you like using that. I always recommend pencils though if you don't usually do your brows because pencils are easier to work with. And when grabbing a brow shade, I'd recommend a shade that is the same color as your hair or a shade lighter. So before the concealer creases, which it kind of is already, I immediately go in with a powder and I am using Laura Mercier's translucent powder to set the concealer. Setting the concealer will ensure that it doesn't crease. So the palette I'm going to use for my eyes today is by Dose of Colors. It is the Baked Browns palette. It is the palette to get. Um, <laughs> if you like neutral tones, you should get it. I definitely am a huge, huge fan of this palette. I reach for it almost every time I do a look. I am going to take both Desert, Deserted, I was going to say Deserted, <laughs> and Outdoorsy onto a fluffy brush and I'm going to apply that to my crease. And this product is very blendable. The crease, if you tilt your head back, so let me tilt my head back for you, this part of your eye I think kind of where the top of your eyeball is, um, that's your crease. Not down here where your eyelid creases, but up here. And this will actually make your eyes look more bigger and it actually kind of broadens your eye shape. Whereas if I had applied it here, which I used to do when I first started doing makeup, just applying it literally right here, it only gave me this much lid space. Whereas applying it all the way up here allows me this much lid space to work with. For the brow bone, I like to use, like this is my tried and true, I like to use Melt Cosmetics Blur Eyeshadow. This eyeshadow matches my skin tone. This is by Real Techniques in the domed shadow brush. And I just, it's fluffy because I don't want to pack on the product. Right. Yeah. If you have long brow hairs that kind of shift throughout the day, I'd recommend a brow gel, <laughs> but in like a tube form. And this is by Benefit, their Gimme Brow in the shade of Five. I comb through the pretty straight up because I want the front of my hairs to stick straight up. And then coming back here, I kind of lay them down. So I am going to take that light shade in the palette, which is called Tea Light. I'm just going to apply it towards the front of your lid and kind of in the middle. Helps to make your eyes look bigger, make you look more awake. I'm not swiping it, like swiping it, because it could you could lose the intensity of your product. Then for the outer V, I'm going to go in with a dark color. I am going to use Enigma by Melt, and this is like a red brown, but like a maroon brown, if that makes sense. So with a more precise brush, I am going to be applying that darker maroon shade, my outer V. Then I'm going to go in with the brush I used to apply to the crease and I'm just gonna buff that out. So I apply a shadow in my V shape because that helps to kind of give my eyes shape. It doesn't look flat in one color like this side. It just helps to kind of accentuate everything. Now I'm going to apply eyeliner. I'm just going to keep it tight, do a small wing. I am also using another gel product. This is by Maybelline Eye Studio in the shade Blackest Black. We gotta go home. When coming into the center, towards the 
and a part of the eye. I start to press, press the gel product onto my lash line. So the lashes I'm using are by Vegas Nay. It is the Bronze Beauty Lashes. When applying lashes, um, having tweezers or if you have a lash applicator will work. Um, while I wait for the glue to dry, when applying lashes, I recommend a handheld mirror that you can look down into. You want to wait about 30 seconds until the glue is tacky. And I'm going to get that as close to the lash line as possible. Then I go in to the center and just connect it. Apply it as close to the lash line as possible. I like these lashes. They're pretty light. They're not heavy at all. I'm going to do the other eye off camera. Then I will come back and we will do the face. Prior to even applying foundation, I like to spritz my face with spritz my face with wow. Spritz my face with Smashbox primer water. So now I'm going to use Farsali Unicorn Essence. I have been liking this so far and I haven't used it in a while. Start rubbing it into the skin. And it is an oil-based um, product. I am going to apply powder to the oilier parts of my face. So, so I know Jackie Ina does this. It's basically applying powder where you get really oily. It's supposed to help prolong the foundation. So I'm just applying it basically everywhere. Because if you know, I am, I think the oiliest person on this earth. So now I'm going to go in with foundation. I'm going to use Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation in the shade 6 Sand Beige. I'm also going to use CoverGirl Healthy Elixir Foundation in the shade Medium Beige. So I just mix the two on the back of my hand. So I do two pumps each, like so. Then I will take a foundation brush like so and start applying it onto my face. So I like to apply quite a lot of foundation in my problem areas, which you can see is right towards the bottom half of my face. Then I'm going to take the sponge and I'm going to start blending it out. And I like using a sponge just because it gives your face like a flawless finish. You don't have to get a beauty blender. One of the girls I do lives with, Ash, who is now one of my good friends, she actually raves about a beauty sponge from, from Family Dollar. If you have a Family Dollar you, near you, you need to check that out and get me one. Lately I have been loving this foundation combination, not only because of the color match, but also because of the coverage. It's just full, but not cakey. We have our foundation on, and the concealer I'm going to use is by Tarte Shape Paper, of course. So I'm going to use both Light Medium Honey and Light Medium, which is the shade I used earlier. This is Light Medium. The shade tape is full coverage, but the product spreads. So you don't need to go all the way out here. Take this one and apply it right on top. That's Light Medium Honey. Then, taking my beauty sponge again. I am going to start working this. So as you can see, it's already spreading and I haven't even touched what I have going on in here. So I'm picking up that product. So you really don't need a lot. That brightening light effect is from the lighter concealer. Then once I get what I kind of want it to look like, I'll go in with the bottom of the sponge, which has whatever leftover foundation, and I'll blend it. This makes my face look more awake, gives it more dimension, brings forward what I want to bring forward. And this side, as you can see, without concealer, it would have been pretty plain, flat, all of that. So now I am going to take the concealer and I'm going to define the center of my face. So for this, because I don't want it to stand out too much, I'm just going to use light medium. I'm going to apply to the forehead, down the bridge of my nose, on the tip, Cupid's bow, and chin. And that is all that I apply concealer. Sometimes if I'm feeling extra, 
I'll apply it down here, but that's only if I'm not going to contour. If I just go in with bronzer, whenever I blend out this part of my face, I always use the bottom of the sponge just because I don't want it as bright as the under eyes, but it still gives the face structure without drawing too much attention to it. So I actually want a little bit of the noticeability. Is that even a word? What the hell? So I'm just going to take the tip of my sponge and I'm just going to blend it out. And I don't want to blend it too much because I don't want the product to spread because that's going to make the nose look whiter. I really want to keep it tight. Get it right, get it tight. So this is where we have the powder so far. I've applied it right there for the contour. Doing the same on the other side. The powder helps to brighten. So anywhere you apply it, it's going to brighten your face. So now I like to go in with my face powder. BH Studio Pro Matte Finish Press Palette in the shade 230. And this is where I set the rest of my face. So whatever part of my face, which is not very much, is not covered by foundation, I go in with this powder. And I am using the Real Techniques Multitask Brush. And then I kind of start to dust away powder. That will be the center of the forehead. Dust this away. Now go in with the color just so that it's not too white. I'll do the same to this side. So powdering like this also makes your face very matte. So now we're going to go in with contouring. So I love this palette. I can't express to you what this palette means to me. So this is the Lorac Pro Contour Palette. And this is the shade range that is in here. I believe they only have one contour palette. Medium Contour, which is this shade right here, is my jam have been applying contour with this brush. Ilani told me to do it, and I did. I'll go in with Medium Contour by Lorac. So then I just lightly go in right on the cheekbones. It's so effortlessly applied. And I actually have some bronzer left over, which is why I was trying to wipe it off but that is the hula bronzer by benefit i have applied it contour 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 now i'm going to show you guys how i contour this nose i use the same palette i go in with light contour i take it on this fluffy brush which is also by morphe i want my nose to be pretty skinny so i actually apply the contour right on top of my nose so this is on my nose this is the side of my nose because I want my nose to look skinny if I applied it on the side of my nose my nose would still look wide and I see the shape that I am going for but I just take product and blend it into the brows then I take it onto the tip of my nose and then I kind of round out underneath here and that will make your nose kind of turn up so that it's not turned pointed it down. So the nose is definitely looking harsh. So I go in with my beauty blender, no product added. I just run it over just so that it kind of blends it. So to highlight the nose, I will use the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter in the shade Mean Money. I don't like my highlight to stand out, although I've done it before, but I don't really like to if I'm going out. So I will use this because me money is a highlight, but it's not like your average in your face highlight, subtle highlight. So that's why I like it because I want the nose to be subtle. I don't want it to be in your face. I'm gonna go in with blush real quick, and I'm going to use Dose of Colors Blush Like You Meant It in the shade Amazement. It is like this coral color. Very suitable for your skin tones if you are my color or darker. So I'm just going to take that on a blush brush. I'm going to apply that to the apples of my cheeks. And it just gives a nice healthy glow. Makes it look like you have life in your face. I'm here for it. 
Next, the highlighter I'm going to use is also by Melt. It is in the shade Stargazer. It is the perfect highlight without overdoing it, but still highlighting. So I'm going to use e.l.f. blush brush. Apply it right on the high point of my cheeks. As you can see, it's highlighting, but it's not like boom, you know, but it's there. Uh, I'm obsessed with it. Like if you are doing bright on a makeup or if you're doing your own makeup, if you're doing bright on a makeup, wow. If you're doing a bride's makeup or you're doing your own wedding makeup, I feel like this highlighter would be perfect because it's not too much, but it's, it'll give you that nice natural glow. So now I'm going to take some on that same brush that I used to apply my nose and I'm going to apply it to the inner corners so that it feels more light to the eyeballs. So now for the lips. I'm going to show you guys my ultimate lips. So I go in with Colourpop Lip Liner in the shade Curvy. This is the collab they did with Karen, who is known as I Love Salai. I start to fill in. For the top lip, it's the same but I fill in a lot of the top. Normally I would go in with a nude lip crown. I can't find one. So I'm going to use NYX Butter Gloss on top. So what it does by leaving the center lip bare is it kind of creates that shininess that you want to your lips, but that gradient effect. So that is what I'm living for. I have been loving Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. This is so bomb and it's only 14 bucks. It smells so good. So this is the finished look. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the full tutorial. I really want it to be as in-depth as possible to kind of help you guys with your makeup journey, give you a good foundation to go from there. But I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you learned some tips and tricks, let me know if you try them out. Thumbs up this video if you like these kinds of videos so that I know. Ah, I went real basic, okay? I'm giving you basic, okay? <laughs> but anyways, Thank you, thank you for tuning in. I know it's a long one for sure, so I thank you. I definitely appreciate you guys staying to the end. If you want to keep up with me elsewhere, you can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Brie K. Lately, I have been on this Instagram live kick with a few of my other good friends, and we go live every Thursday. So if you want to check out there, definitely go follow me on Instagram so you'll be notified when we go live. Live. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be around more. Let me know. Talk to me. All that good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next one.